Welcome back to Don's Life, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. Today we're going to perform an upgrade on my EGR electric roll track. That's right, we are going to make it work with the OEM key fob. And while we're at it, we might as well do our maintenance checks. Let's go. So earlier this year, I partnered with EGR and we installed this electric roll track on my GMC Sierra AT4. So if you wanna go back and look at that video, I'll link it up above here as well as in the video description. That should answer all your questions when it comes to assembly, install, operation, but I will remind you on how it's currently operated. So right now it works with the lock and unlock of the vehicle. So the vehicle is currently unlocked. That means these controls will allow me to open and close the bed. I can push any button, it'll stop at any time. I have the same controls over here, so it doesn't matter which ones that I use. And it has a safety, so if you had your arm in here or some precious cargo, it's not gonna break anything. What I really like about this is the fact that the canister that everything rolls into is super high off of the floor, so you don't give up as much bed space with most of the roll-up type covers. So now for the good news. If you were to get one of these, all of the inventory in the field, as well as what's in EGR's warehouse, is receiving this upgrade before it ships out. If you already own one, you can contact EGR to find out the best solution to get yours upgraded. Now to get this video out to you quickly, I'm actually gonna do a swap of the ECU. So I'm taking the old one off, putting this one in, which already has this feature available within it. And then while I have everything exposed, I'm gonna show you how to do the maintenance checks so we can get ready for my frigid Canadian winters. So let's get started with these maintenance checks. Step one, open the cover. Next, you take a two and a half millimeter Allen key and open up these inspection covers. There's one here and one there. Now we have to close the roll track so we can expose the internals which are currently blocked by the cover itself. So while we have this open, we want to inspect the low point drain tubes through these circular rubber grommets. You want to reach your hand in there and feel around to make sure that they're sealed up against the body of the canister. These ones seem to be fine. Using some plastic compatible silicone spray, we need to lubricate the spirals at each end of the canister because this is what the roll track rolls up into. Now we'll open it up and reinstall our inspection covers. Make sure you don't over torque the bolts. So we're gonna put this on a nice low setting. And that's really it for the maintenance. Once it's done though, you should run a calibration cycle. Just make sure everything's calibrated properly. We're gonna do that at the end after I swap out the ECU. It's mounted right here with three of these guys. I can get the two of them easily. The other one's in the back. I could sit there with a four millimeter Allen wrench and do a little quarter turns for the next half hour. But instead, I'm just gonna loosen off the bed rail bolts and I'm gonna lift this all up in one piece. And then that'll expose the ECU on the side because it does have some harnesses we need to disconnect. But before I do that, I'm just gonna disconnect the fuse on the battery so I don't have any issues. Now, since I'm backing off a number of the bolts here, that means that these rails are gonna have the potential to shift a little bit because it is gonna get lifted up. So I'm just gonna take some masking tape and just mark some areas where the weather stripping comes to an edge. So then I can just have those lined up, retorque it all down when I'm done. And then everything should be exactly where it was when I started. Okay, I've removed 14 of these bad boys off of the rails so they can lift up almost. I'm gonna have to cut my cable tie because these drains are gonna be in the way. Now I'm gonna put my floor jack into the box of the truck so we can lift up that canister. I'm not your average Joe. I could definitely do it myself, but I don't wanna flex too hard. So we're gonna do it this way. Now before I lift it, I'm just gonna pull the drains where they're attached to the body. And then that way, the canister is not connected to anything that we could wreck.
Now that we're airborne and the ECU is exposed, if you end up doing it this way, make sure you use a four millimeter Allen wrench and do it by hand. Don't use a power tool on this. I already loosened this one. That one I got off earlier. So now we just have to back this one out and then we should be able to take this off. They also shipped me some brand new screws with the thread locker ready to go. I'm gonna tighten up the bottom one last because once this is sitting back down, it's actually easier to get to that one. Now, because I'm not bolted down yet, now I can shift it and make sure that I'm lined up with all of my tape. Looking good. Okay, ECU is tightened down. I reattached the front drain hoses. I'll reattach the rear ones soon. These bolts, I use the ratchet just to get the threads closer to being tight. So this is still a little bit loose. And then I will torque these down with my mini torque wrench. And then we should be good to plug everything back in with the fuses, calibrate it, and then try it out. All right, now we're gonna run the calibration. We should be able to hold this down for about 10 seconds, maybe 15, and it should power up. Close, open, close, open until it's done calibrating. Now just before we test it, make sure you go into your vehicle settings and set it up that the key fob, when you hit unlock, unlocks all the doors, not just the driver door. All right, the truck's locked right now. If we do this properly, we hit unlock twice, it'll start to open. I can hit unlock again at any time to pause it and then unlock twice to have it resume until it's fully open. And then to close it, it should be lock twice, lock to pause it, lock twice again to have it continue. And you can keep doing that whenever you want until it's eventually closed. So let's try. Pause it, resume. Pause it again, resume. So that worked. Now let's try and lock it up. Double press. Pause it. Resume, double press. I think that worked exactly as advertised. Pretty cool upgrade. Well, there it is, another successful upgrade here on the Dawn's Life channel. Stick around, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we are going to be testing this thing in the dead of winter and we got at least four to six months of it coming our way and I heard it's a record breaking year for snow. Again, I think every year we break the records. Anyway, that'll be a lot of fun, but if you like today's video, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. We'll talk to you next time. So quick tip for you, for your passive door locks, set it to just driver because if you put all doors, when you click this, it will actually open the cover. I have it just to the driver door, but a bonus, whether the truck's running or not, you can use the buttons here to open and close the box.
Now we'll close it. So you can do that while the truck is running. Bonus. <laughs>